Through Christ we overcome. We can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. The song we just sang was taken from the book of First John chapter 5 and verse 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Wow. Even our yeah. faith. It mentions that we are world overcomers. Mm. Praise God. That's something to rejoice about. Yeah. We can see ourselves on top of the world, yeah. no matter what comes our way. Mm. Because the scripture here, it says <coughs> that whoever is born of God. Mm. So when you are in Jesus, you can overcome the world. Mm. You know, whatever situations that the world brings your way, you can say, I'm more than a conqueror. Mm. I'm an overcomer. Yeah. And it says our yeah. faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Yeah. Our belief in Jesus is the victory that um, enables us to overcome anything. Mm. Overcome the world means it's talking about everything that is in the world. Yeah. You know, all the bad things, all the good things. We mm. can overcome it. Yeah. And we can live victoriously. You know, sickness is something in the world. Mm. And we have the ability to overcome sickness. Right through the healing power of That's God. That's right. And you know, we've been talking about rising up with confidence because in Jesus Christ, we are not weaklings, we're not failures. We are called to rise up with confidence mm. because He is on our side. In the previous episode, we looked at the scripture in Philippians 1.6, where it says, being confident that this thing that God has begun in you, the good thing He's begun in you, He will perform it. He will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Mm. And we touched on, you know, certain people's lives like Paul and some of the disciples. And we see how they overcame life situations with the Word of God. Yeah. Because they knew who they were inside. That's right. And even as we look at this scripture today, in as, as Shalom was saying, you know, we are born of God and we overcome the world. Mm. And this, the next part says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You know, twice it's mentioned there, we are world overcomers. Mm. And then yeah. verse 5 talks about what our faith is. Yeah. It says, who is he that overcomes the world, even Jesus Christ? Or rather, who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son mm. of God? So our believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus came to this earth and manifested mm. as a human being yeah. on this earth gives us the ability to overcome anything in this world. Yeah. 
And you know, in, in this episode, we like to talk about knowing that God is able to work in your life. Mm. Because when you know who God is, you'll start to see life really differently. You won't see it, you know, as well, just day to day, I gotta live, whatever mm. life brings, I just gotta bear it. Yeah. Well, today you can know that you can have control over what life brings your way. That's right. Because according to this verse, it says you overcome the world. Mm. And the world brings all kinds of challenges against us. Yeah. I mean, we face, um, you know, the sickness like you mentioned, and then there's lack. poverty, mm. yeah, lack and want, fear. fear. I mean, all those are evil spirit, spirits that try to come and control us and put us down. But in Jesus Christ, we are world overcomers. Amen. And the first step is knowing that God is able to work in your life. Mm. I want to take you to this verse in Ephesians 3, verse 20. So we're talking about, you know, knowing that God is able and you can rise up with confidence. Mm. It doesn't matter what your past has been like. You know, sometimes the past tries to control us and put us in a box or, you know, what people have said, try to control us. Mm. But all you got to believe today is what God says. Mm. And God says, you are more than a conqueror. You are well able yeah. to overcome life. And sometimes yeah. it could even just be a weakness, you know, mm. that we think I'm unable to overcome this weakness, mm. you know, because I've had it for so many years or bad habit, yeah. something like that. And we put those things in front of us like shields and we say you know because of this i cannot overcome life mm. and i'll always be a failure yeah. stuff like that but then we're going to just show you right now how god's ability working in us will enable you to become overcomers in this life yeah you know ephesians 3 20 says now unto him that is god <coughs> who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us Mm. I love that scripture. You know, it says more than you could ask or even think God is going to do in your life. Yeah. Exceeding abundantly. That's what he has promised. Mm. And you notice the first part says unto God who is able. God is able to work in your life. Yeah. Maybe, you know, you may be praying certain <coughs> things and God says even more than you pray for I'm going to do in your life. Mm. My that is encouraging. God has the capacity yeah you know, to do exceeding abundantly mm. above all that we ask or think. And that word able also means he is powerful. He is. And he is capable. Yeah. You know, if there's a big task that you cannot take or somebody has given you something to do, you say, Lord, you are in me. And because of that, I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. And in the scriptures, we see there was a man named Abraham and he and his wife, they were pretty, you know, they were quite old and they had never had children. And God had promised, I think when Abraham, he was about somewhere, you know, in his 70s, you know, God says, I'm going to multiply your seed. I'm going to make it, you know, more than the stars of the heavens and mm. the sand on the sea. And Abraham, he believed that word. Mm. At 70, they were trying to have a child. Yeah. Something really impossible. Yeah. And he, he just said, okay, God, I'm going to believe your word mm. despite the situation. Let's see what Romans 4.21 says about Abraham. It says, Abraham was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. Mm. You know, being an old man and his wife, you know, long in years as well, he believed that word. Despite his situation, he held fast to that word. Yeah. Now, it didn't mean that Abraham <coughs> didn't make mistakes or, you know, go through, you know, certain times where he would have doubted the word. But it says that he was fully confident in God's mm. word. Even sometimes when doubt, you know, doubt comes your way or, you know, worry, what mm. if it doesn't happen? Yeah. You can start to stand on this verse and you can say, Lord, I thank you that just like Abraham was fully persuaded, he was fully confident mm. that what you had promised you were able to perform. I can believe the same thing. Yeah. And even, I can believe it. Even through the mistakes that Abraham made, yeah. God assured him and, you know, kept building confidence in mm. him and image in him yeah. that you can do it. Yeah. You know, in spite of whatever has happened and in spite of the mistakes that you have made, mm. I'm still going to make you the father of many nations. Yeah. And, you know, God didn't give up on Abraham mm. just as much as he doesn't give up on us. Mm. 
And, you know, several times even when Abraham tried to help God with certain things, you know, when God really had big ideas and plans for yeah. Abraham, you know, and Abraham was like, you know, God, maybe you can't do it. Now, we don't mm. know. Abraham doesn't really say that. Mm. But we can understand in a situation that he's in 75 years and his wife similar, you know, and having no children yet. Yeah. You know, and then... Of course, the doubts would have come and increased, but then God kept always encouraging him. And in the book of Genesis, you can read all how the Lord keeps constantly encouraging him and saying, I am the Lord that brought you out of the land that you are in to give you a land to inherit it. And you know what? God's promise to Abraham, he said, I'm going to multiply your seed. Mm. Well, God did. He did keep his word. Today, those who are born to the family of God are Abraham's seed. We are children of God yeah. because he believed that promise. Mm. And it says, I want to read it once again. It says he was fully persuaded. He was fully confident. Mm -hmm. And he was confident in the promise of God. So that's where your confidence is. Not in yourself, not in, um, you know, what others have said about you. Well, that's okay. You know, there are people who do encourage us. But your final, you're right on the top position where you believe for confidence should be in the promises of God. Mm. You know, God's promises, according to 2 Peter 1, 4, these are exceeding great and precious promises. Mm. And I love this part. It says, by these promises, we can partake of God's divine nature. Amen. So by his promises, you can actually know his heart. You can mm. know his heart for you. That's what it says. You partake of his divine nature. And, you know, like we saw the scripture right in the beginning, uh, Philippians 1, 6, where it says you can be confident that what God starts, he's able to finish it. Yeah. That's a promise. Yeah. yeah. And then right now we saw 1 John um, 5, yeah. verse 4. It says, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So you can turn that around and say, Lord, yes, I'm born of you and I can overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. So you can name any situation that is facing, you know, that you're facing right now. Mm. And you can say, Lord, I overcome it because you are on my side. That's mm. where your confidence is in. Yeah. The promise of God. And, you yeah. know, even in situations of trials and temptations, mm. you know, God gives us the ability to overcome yeah. them. And thinking of all that in Hebrews, was, um, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18, it says... Um, okay, I'll just read it from here. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 says, For in, in that he himself, that's referring to Jesus, he has suffered being tempted, and he is able to relieve and help them that are tempted. Yeah. So, you know, it could be a temptation that you're facing, <clears throat> that you're, you want to give up sometimes. And, you know, you say, Lord, well, I've always, you know, fallen and failed. And I can't rise up. Mm. This thing always gets me. Well, it says here that Jesus also was tempted. Mm. He was tempted. And, you know, everything isn't mentioned in the Gospels. Yeah. Every temptation that Jesus faced. But Jesus, but he can, knew the power that was on the inside yeah. of him. That assurance <clears throat> was there. That's why he faced life every mm. day, boldly and confidently. Yeah. And it says, yeah. Jesus is able to help us. When Praise we God. That's so what we, we need to cry out and say, yeah. Jesus, help me. Mm. When you are in a situation that you, you know, feel like you're failing and falling into temptation, say, Lord, help me. And He will. He will help you because that's what He's there for. Mm. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And yeah. one of the first ways you can start rising up with confidence is believing the promise of God. That's how Abraham rose up in a very contrary circumstance. Mm. You know, previously, we saw people who faced contrary situations, but they rose up confidently. Their prayers were so bold in the midst of all those situations. They said, Lord, we're going to continue. We're going to speak your word boldly, no matter mm. what is coming against us. Yeah, that's right. And then Abraham, he rose <coughs> up with confidence and said, Lord, I believe your promise. Mm. I believe your word that is spoken. Yeah. And today you can have that same confidence. It's not only for the people in the Bible. You can have the same thing. Because God says, whoever is born of God. Yeah. So you can put your name in that whoever and say, you know, your name and then I am born of God. Mm. I will overcome the world. Yeah. This is the victory that overcomes the world. And believing is the key. Yeah. You know, if we are to see results, we need to believe mm. that God is able to keep yeah. us. 
So knowing that God is able, He is strong to work in your life. In whatever situation that comes by your way, you can know that God is able to help you. He is able to give you boldness to rise up. Mm. And even when doubt comes your way, you may be asking, actually, what should I do when doubt comes and fear comes? Well, the Bible says you can cast that imagination down. You can pull it down. You know, according to Second Corinthians 10.5, We've That's seen this, scripture. yeah. We've actually seen this earlier, but we want to kind of repeat it again, because the more you repeat God's word, it goes into your spirit, it becomes alive to you. Mm. Let's see. This verse tells us what we should do when wrong thoughts come into our mind. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, which means you have a right over your thought life. Doubt doesn't have to control you. When doubt comes your way, you can say in Jesus' name, I pull down that stronghold. You have no right over my mind. My mind is the mind of Christ. God has given me peace of mind. You know, that's what we ought to do. Yeah. We gotta be very firm against wrong thoughts mm. because they're only trying to steal your joy, steal yeah. your happiness. Yeah but you can rise up, you can be a world overcomer. Mm. And you know, God wants to set you free today, whether it's you know addictions or habits that you're going through. Mm. And in your own strength, you can't get rid of it. Yeah. But God wants to let you know that because He lives on the inside of you, you are able to overcome it. Yeah. And even you know, talking about rising up in confidence and believing that God is able, mm. you know, a man like Abraham, he was able to even believe that God would raise up Isaac his son mm. from the dead because he kept constantly believing and practicing how to mm. believe in God constantly. Yeah. And that's what even, you know, gave him faith mm. to believe that Isaac would rise from the dead. Yeah. Actually, when those situations rise up against you, that's the moment you ought to speak the word boldly. And the more we do it, the more easy it becomes, yeah. to, you know, to control things, exactly. to bring things under control and yeah. to um, overcome mm. temptation and situations. Yeah, because you know, God's word, it doesn't bring weakness into us. No. God says He lifts us out of weakness. He said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Mm. So today, what is the weakness that you're going through? You know, you may, you may name it right now. And the word says, God says that my strength is made perfect in your time of weakness. And that is so encouraging to me. In weakness, God's strength is so much greater. Yeah. It's so great that I can overcome that situation. So yeah. you can start building confidence on the inside of you by taking these promises. Yeah. Back in Philippians 1.6, it says, being confident that what God has promised, He will perform it. Mm. So you can say, Lord, I'm going to be confident that what you promised in my life, you will perform it. Mm. And then 1 John 5, 4 again. No, I am born of God. I overcome the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. Mm. So you stand in front of your situation and you speak these promises and build confidence on the inside of you. It starts to rise up within you. Your spirit starts to rejoice. Mm. Yeah, these are the words I ought to speak over my life. Yeah. yeah. And in situations of trials and temptations, we can say, Lord, mm. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Amen. Philippians 4.13. Yeah. And you can know today that God is able to do even more than you ask or think. Mm. And you can also believe that you are a world overcomer. You know, life doesn't have to control you anymore. You yeah. can rise up with confidence mm. because you got the greater one living on the inside of you. Mm. So rise up this day and say, Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. 